Disclaimer. The information provided in this video is for general information and educational purposes only. Students should test cybersecurity techniques in the secured lab setup. I do not take any responsibility, and I am not liable for any damage or problem caused while implementing the tools and technique. Now I'd like to show you in SQL injection in a different file on a page, and I'll show you a few things you can do to exploit the vulnerability. The first thing I'm going to go to is the login page which is here, user info. The first time we went to the login page from there, this time we went to the user info page. This page will show you the information about the user provided you give the username and password. I'm gonna do bloody and I'm gonna put my password 12345678 and it'll show my details, username, password, and my signature as BC. The statement that's being executed here is similar to what was being executed when you log in. So select asterisk from accounts where username is what you put in the user field and password is what you put in the password field. What we're going to do now is we're going to see a different way of exploiting this kind of vulnerability. In the previous video, we were doing it using a post text box. Whatever you put in the text box was being posted using a post method to the web application. Now, these vulnerabilities can exist in Git. What I mean by Git is when you do a Git when something is sent as Git, you will see it here in the URL. If you look at the URL here, you see it's being sent as the username bloody and password 12345678. Let me just copy this URL here and we'll start playing with it from the URL instead of doing it on the web page. I just want to show you a different example because in many cases, there might not even be text boxes. For example, it could be something like news and news.php. So we can see here in this example that it's index.php. In your pen testing, you might see something like news.php and id is equal to 2, then you can try to inject stuff in there. We're having an example here where we're going to be injecting things into the username field which is this field, and we're going to be injecting stuff in here. Anytime when you're doing your pen test, anytime you see parameters like this, you should try to inject them. Anytime you see something.php and then you have a parameter that equals something, then always try to inject stuff in there and see if it works for you. We've also seen a way of discovering the injection and that was using the quotation mark and using the and. We do a false, true, and one is equal to one, then one is equal to two and if the server is executing what we want then we're gonna know that there's an SQL injection. I'm gonna show you another way of discovering these exploits using the order by. As the name suggests, the order by the statement is used to order the results that we get on the screen based on a specific column. Our injection is going to be like this. I'm gonna do the order by one. If the injection exists, this should work because in each select statement there should be at least one column being selected. Therefore, when we say order by one, we're saying I want to order the results based on the first column. This should always be acceptable to the database and return a true or something that we expect. We also need to add the comment here and execute this code. It's exactly like before when we're doing this. This is our URL and what's gonna happen on the database. This is the code that's being executed on the database and it's going to look like this. It's gonna be select asterisk from accounts where username is equal to bloody and notes how Thys is closing the quote and we're gonna do order by one and there shouldn't be this code for end. And this comment will tell the SQL interpreter to ignore anything that comes in after it. Alophthis is going to be ignored. Another thing that I want you to note is when you're injecting stuff into the browser, the code should be encoded. For example, when you put it on the URL, it should be written as percent %23. Spaces, for example, get converted to percent %20, and percent %23 is the comment that we're using. I'm gonna copy that and replace my comment sign with it. 
You can Google HTTP encoder and you'll see there are online tools that'll just convert this for you. I know that the hashtag can be converted to percent %20 that's why I'm using it there. I'm gonna hit enter and as you can see now we're seeing something that's acceptable. Nothing wrong and then it's showing me the information about bloody 123456678 and showing me the signature. It is ignoring the password. The injection worked and it's ordering by one so it's not showing me anything wrong. Let's try to make this number one a very large number. I'll put in 10,000 now. What we're saying right now is I want you to order the results that will be returned by the current select statement based on column 10,000. Chances are there aren't 10,000 columns used in this select statement, and this should return an error. When I execute this, you'll see that there is an error. The error is in the order close. Still, there is an unknown column for 10,000 and this is great because now we know that the database is executing what we want. When we told it to order the results based on the first column, it showed us the results. It followed what we told it, and then when we told it to order the results based on a column that does not exist, it gave us an error. So, it's obviously vulnerable to SQL injections. I hope you learned something once again in today's tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and enable notifications to keep you updated on the latest ethical hacking topics. Thanks again for watching. Let us move on to the next episode of the SQL Injection Documentary. Peace.